There's been some pretty frightening stories in the news recently, both here in the UK and in other countries talking about a potential war, effectively a World War III. When the UK's army bosses are talking about training and equipping a citizen army, it definitely makes your ears prick up. OK, there's a lot of sabre rattling and things like that, but it got me thinking about preparedness when it comes to communications, not just in the event of war, but other situations too. Just 20 years ago, a British army system known as Mould was decommissioned. Born in the height of the Cold War, it was a backbone of communications infrastructure that would provide coverage across the whole country in the event of, well, a nuclear attack. The Royal Observer Corps also had a network of radio stations that covered the entire country, linking 1,563 underground bunkers, whose main purpose was to collate data on fallout in order to pinpoint the location of a nuclear attack. These were in use in smaller numbers until 1991, so not that long ago. And now, using the amazing but not new technology known as LoRa 868, with an app called Meshtastic, we too can create huge networks of radio beacons that mesh and move almost like a living creature to pass messages over wider areas, and it would be invaluable in an emergency. This all sounds like a bit of scaremongering, but it's true that we're living in perhaps the biggest period of unrest since the collapse of the Soviet Union. Also, living through a global pandemic, it's clear how much we rely on supply chains and big infrastructure for things like food, telephone and the internet. But let's stick to comms and dial it back to the real basics in terms of Meshtastic and the gadgets I'm going to cover in this video. I'll start with two examples. Let's say you have a festival in a remote area or even an area with inadequate mobile phone infrastructure. All of a sudden you have thousands of people trying to make calls, send messages, upload videos and photos, and the networks end up under strain. Of course additional masks are usually deployed, but an outage or failure can lead to issues when communications are necessary. Secondly, let's say there's a natural disaster, and we do have them in the UK from time to time, or some sort of attack. Mobile phone and internet infrastructure can be damaged or compromised quite easily. If that was to happen in a time when the emergency services have moved to the new ESN 5G network, which is on the horizon, they'd get first priority, meaning a backup form of communications would be a sensible thing to have in your arsenal. Before we continue, I've done an idiot's guide to Meshtastic and this whole system, which I'll link below. But basically, LoRa stands for long range, and it's a bit of a radio craze in which little devices like this can talk to each other. Better still, they mesh to create networks. It's license free and completely off grid, meaning there's no reliance on cellular networks or Wi Fi, they just work. All you need is a power source. A device like this can be linked to a smartphone, even if it has no cell service, and when paired with an app like Meshtastic, you can send messages via little radio packets to other nodes in the area that are public, and private messages should you wish to. If you can't make direct contact, then these nodes can hop via others in order to reach their destination, and it'll automatically find the most efficient path to use. I've made a couple of videos now and done plenty of experiments in which I've made contacts and connections 80 kilometers away without any special equipment or huge hilltops. So a great bit of kit for use with Meshtastic is the Liligo T-Deck which consists of an 868 MHz transceiver, a keyboard and a screen. The Heltec board I showed in other videos requires the presence of a smartphone in order to pass messages through it via Bluetooth but the T-Deck does it all, although a phone is required for configuration, but again, you don't need a network connection. Devices like this are great for those not familiar with the whole concept, because you can just switch it on and send a message. When you receive one, it comes up on the screen. Let's say a situation occurred in which there was no cell networks or internet. You could hand these out to friends or family or even neighbours and keep in touch. Even an elderly person would find this device easy to use. If you needed longer range comms, base stations like mine at home, which consist of a Heltec V32 board and a Yagi, can be deployed to provide coverage over long distances. With these in place, these small T-Deck devices can piggyback on the base stations. One roof or loft mounted base station could cover a neighbourhood effectively. 
For power, they can run off USB connected to the mains, or if that was down, a battery or solar supply. I use these little LiPo batteries, but there's endless options you could go for. They come as a single unit with the keyboard, circuit board and screen attached together. All you need to do is figure out power and antenna options, which will come to soon. There's also these 3D printed cases all over the internet that can be used or modified to suit your needs. Once inside the case they look great and are protected from harm. These cases were sent to me by my friend Paul, who has the fantastic YouTube channel called Noximan. What he doesn't know about things like CB radio, 3D printing and a million other radio related topics isn't worth knowing, and his channel is great, so go and subscribe to him. I'll leave a link in the description below, as he's doing some great mesh-tastic videos at the moment. Once the T-Deck is flashed and configured, it'll just work as soon as it's switched on. As for flashing, it's just the same as flashing a little Heltec device. You go to the Mesh-tastic flashing page using Chrome or Edge, select your device from the list, choose the most recent firmware version, select your COM port and wait for it to do its thing. Then you just download the Meshtastic app and click add device. It'll show on the list and ask for a Bluetooth pairing code. Once it's connected you can tweak the various parameters I covered in my beginner's guide and you're good to go. This firmware is evolving all the time and there's plenty more to come, but you can see your most recent node pings by scrolling through. You can also see the most recent message. It would be nice to go back to previous messages and I hear this is something that's being worked on. To send a message out on the main channel everyone's using, you can simply go to the long fast page and type your message. When you've done, press enter and it'll send. If you want to message privately, you can set up different channels in the Meshtastic app, and also choose your intended recipient from the list. As I said in the previous videos, an important thing to consider is antenna. My cases only allow for these small antennas, but you could mount a bulkhead SMA connector in order to use something bigger, or even bigger. The better the antenna and the higher it is, the more range you'll cover. The antennas inside the case in the palm of your hand are really only good for short range comms in an urban environment. On a hilltop they will do significantly better. Hooking the T-Deck up to an external or loft mounted antenna will increase its range considerably, so bear this in mind. The connector on the board is the IPEX or UFL connector, so be sure to pick up some of these pigtails which convert the IPEX to SMA if you're using different antenna options. Another thing to bear in mind is that there's a lot of rubbish antennas out there, so be sure to buy from reputable brands or sellers. For antenna testing, I use the Nano VNA H4, a really simple to use device despite how complex it looks and it tells me where my 868MHz antennas are most resonant and what the SWR is. There's a couple of small steps you need to take in order to get this set up, and I'll run through them now very quickly, but you can pause these and follow them as you go. We'll be using port 1. So first tap display, trace, and untick everything. Then tap 0 and 1, making sure 0 is highlighted. Then tap back, and go to Format S11 and select SWR. Then tap back, Trace, tap Trace 1, and then back again. Now you can hit Format S11 again, and ensure Log Mag is selected. Now when we put the antenna on the VNA, we can see the yellow line represents the SWR reading, and the white line shows us the most resonant frequency. Using the dial along the top, we can position the marker to show us the optimum SWR and frequency of the antenna. How simple is that? Now, before checking the SWR, you need to calibrate this device, and everything comes in the box to do this, and it's really easy to do. In the box, you get three little SMA connectors. The first is open, the second is short, and the third is load. Firstly on the device select calibrate, calibrate again and then put the open connector on port 1. Next you can tap open and you'll see the device calibrate. Now we can put the short connector on, tap short and the device will calibrate again. And finally put the load connector on port 1, tap load 
and wait for it to calibrate. And for frequency response and SWR, that's all you really need to do if you want to perform a simple check of an antenna. One thing to look out for is dud antennas, and ones that are advertised as 868MHz, but are actually for 868 to 915MHz. These don't provide optimal resonance or SWR on 868. Let's look at the little helical that comes with the Heltex. This is actually pretty good, indicating a good resonance and SWR for 868. If we attach the other Heltec helical, we can see it's most resonant around 868 with a good SWR. These glass mount antennas perform best at 860, but as you can see around 868, they're not too bad. For small antennas, I found these Wi Fi style ones to be the best with a fantastic resonance and SWR around 868 MHz. Going back to my point about being careful, I ordered this pack of antennas off Amazon for around £10, and look what happens when I put one on the VNA. There's no reading whatsoever. These are duds and will damage your device. So a Nano VNA is a handy tool to have in your arsenal when playing with Meshtastic. It just helps keep things in check. I got mine for around £50 off Banggood a few months ago, so I'll leave a link in the description if you want to pick one up. So the final thing to look at is Meshtastic and smartphone use with these devices. The Heltec boards I've covered in previous videos require a smartphone in order to send and receive messages, as well as check the map for people's locations and view the node list properly. As I said earlier, the T-Deck is slightly different in that a smartphone isn't required for messaging, although it does help. You will need a smartphone to set up things like beaconing, location and view things in more detail, and I use these Eulophone smartphones with my T-Dex. They're slimline, more rugged and run Meshtastic on Android really well. I've collected a few different models in the last year or so and they're great for Zello, Meshtastic, some have thermal imaging, some have night vision and some even have DMR transceivers built in. This is the 2024 model known as the Armour 23, which has a satellite messaging service which I'll cover in a dedicated video. When I talk about creating resilience in comms and other things in case of an emergency, this phone has a night vision camera. It's waterproof, dustproof and dropproof and is a great tool for using with Meshtastic for either setup or full messaging, node listing and mapping. The only changes I made to my t decks was to get them to ping every 60 seconds, as this is a good way of seeing who's in range of base when they're deployed. If you have 10 or 20 of these given to friends, family or neighbours, it's a great way of keeping track. The most recent pings will appear at the top of the list, like on the t deck itself. You can also use a phone like this on your base station to keep a track of everyone, especially if you have location data on the portable units, and you can keep an eye on messaging between everyone too. So there's a guide to the Liligo T-Deck, a potentially handy tool in the event of a situation that may have caused our regular methods of communication to go down. I included the VNA section because it's important for the safety of your device to have a well-tuned antenna in place. And if you want to see the Eulophone in action messaging via satellites, then keep an eye on the channel for that video coming soon.